So here in Australia, we don't have bilge rats. We have bilge koalas. <laughs> It's like Saturday Night Fever, only not. <laughs> so having a few days off, we've just driven um, 15 hours north to Byron Bay. We're going to the uh, Blues Festival. It's just the Byron Bay Blues Fest, it's a five day event. It's a fair epic and uh, this is our accommodation. We're up in the Byron Bay hinterland, so we're probably half an hour inland from the east coast of Australia and it's hot and humid and wet. And uh, we've just come across, and I know all you guys love these because they're one of the most world's most popular animals, but uh, I've never seen one in the wild. We've just come across one in the front yard here. Uh, pretty spectacular little creature. I'm not sure he's that well, but uh, I'm gonna go and have a chat. You remember when I polished my mould in my koala suit? This is what you gotta do, you gotta make it fun because I'll tell you what, it's tedium at its best. I've, um, we've located a bilge koala in real life. Here's one. I have never seen a koala in the wild in my life. And here's one. Happy Easter, everyone. The Easter koala's been. Hello, little fella. He's a funny colour, isn't he? He's like a golden retriever on his bum. I don't know. He probably lives in the bloody house. Not the time on there. He's probably thinking, get much bugger out, off, tourists. Leave me alone. Geez, he's a small fella, isn't he? I think he's only a little one. He's off. Fuck off, I just want to sit under a tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just... <laughs> That's going on YouTube. That's my sister with her beautiful potty mouth. Just leave me alone. Look at him. Now. The bilge koala. That's day three of the five day marathon that is the Blues Fest of Byron Bay. Having our roadies in the car park. Pretty good time, eh, guys? Having a great time. Here with my sisters, my brother in laws, and Janet, my wife. <laughs> Not a bad way to go. No kids. No kids. Loving it. Sorry, yeah, Sam. Yeah. Sorry, Ellen. <laughs> Loving it. Gonna go and get some tunes. <laughs> Here comes the rain, guys. <laughs> Absolutely massive deluge here. Just slashed down. We all did a run. Everyone's running in. Look at this. <laughs> what an event. It's absolutely piercing down.
fantastic week. I mean, if you've ever done a big blues fest like that, I mean, it is an absolute marathon. But back here and uh, back on the hulls, and, and last week I was into the uh, angled bracing of the soles and the water tank uh, in my starboard hull. So that's where I'm going to pick up here. Basically, I needed to seal the baffle um, of the water tank. So I got in and did that and put some peel ply on it and then moved uh, towards the, the fuel tank area, which is directly behind or to the stern of this area here. And uh, that's where I'm going to pick up now. Um, I'm back in the fuel tank compartment here, as you can see, and uh, I'm just about to remove the peel ply that I put on the tabbing, and uh, I've put quite a substantial amount of tabbing in there because that's a fairly strong um, uh, bulkhead that's going to be supporting effectively the ends of the fuel tank. So I've rem now removed the peel ply, and uh, and it's revealed a perfect surface ready for glassing or ready for uh, final sand and then a, and then flow coat interior of the uh, of the fuel tank. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to basically clean up around the surrounds and then install this composite angle along. The, uh, the floor line here so that I can then put the sole down and, uh, and everything's just getting put back in place again I'm not glassing any of the floor in yet but I'm actually getting all of those soles dead level so that I can then start working my way up uh, okay so this has to be inset into here um, what I'm going to do I'm going to actually put a piece all the way along here and actually extend it through because that's where the stair module sits on here but, um, I'm going to basically notch this out here and about two or three mil to the thickness of this and then I'm also going to notch down into here and as I mentioned earlier I basically had cut it with a multi-tool and then get a, a hand saw in here just to give it enough relief to uh, to take the full width of the um, of the angle the composite angle here but once that's sat in there and then get the glued in place like I did with the other ones and basically it's it's rock solid and sitting on top so basically it'll be a piece that'll go right through the bulkhead sitting on the bulkhead glued to the wall never going to move Okay, interesting section uh, right here. Um, this is why you don't tear ass into things, because if you tear ass into things, you're often going to make a big mistake. Um, because the foam protrudes 30 mil out from the hull side, you don't want to be cutting the bulkhead in this particular bulkhead, uh, which is actually against the area I removed back in like last episode three or something, or five or whatever it was, where I removed the foam for this uh, engine bay module behind me. So what I've got to do is I've got to get this angle which is fits here to intersect with the bulkhead here not against the wall so I'm going to actually cut it back here and then what I'll do is I'll fill behind it with the uh, the silica uh, sorry the colloidal silica the epoxy mix to make sure that it's all filled and, and strong because there's going to be quite a substantial gap here in this little slot here it's the same deal here I've got uh, you know foam true hole side and then basically this angle has to intersect this bulkhead here so I need to cut it um, there rather than against the hole side which is it's an easy enough mistake to make and I guess we all make these mistakes because we sort of fly into it but you can see here how that's going to now intersect all the way along here perfect floor level and then
Flash on that bulkhead, there? No. What? Is it going to come to me a bit, does it? Hey, on. No, it's flush. No, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's a problem. Now we've done a test fit of the floor, it's time to put these angles in place. You can see how I fitted them here. I'm going to have one around the end of that bulkhead up near the engine bay here. Um, that'll then be tied into this one here, which is sitting along the, um, the bulkhead floor. So basically this will be glassed and that's dead level. We've got that one dead level up there, so the whole thing, and then a couple of short ones here. So this rebate here, remember, is actually out of my stairwell. Um, the stair actually concaves into that, or actually goes into it in a curve here, so. It's like Saturday Night Fever, only not. Okay, so I've got to key these uh, angles with the grinder. Uh, it's probably the only way to do it, but each of these services needs to be keyed in so the epoxy will take properly because this, this stuff is purely cured. Very important it gets keyed properly. So. So you can never be prepared enough. Um, what I've done is I've actually cut a heap of these um, MDF clamps and what they're gonna do, they're basically gonna spring in between here to hold these angles out. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick some paddle pop sticks or some lollipop sticks or tongue depressors or whatever you wanna call them in between there just to get the perfect angle out. I don't wanna be putting too much pressure because it'll push it up and away from the height of what I'm trying to establish, which is this line here. And I've cut a number of them to the exact width that I need and then I'm just going to wedge it once I get it in place. The beauty of the epoxy is I've got about an hour or two of working time before it gels so it gives me a really good um, uh, working time to get everything square and set and then I'm just going to leave it for the weekend. And uh, that, that's a good thing, because I'll leave it for two days, give it 48 hours to really cure. I'll probably only need 24, and I can come in and finish the job. So, yep, yeah, all good. So.
You know, came in yesterday morning early before I went outside and glued these uh, little clamps in place. So essentially, by having the plastic here, it means you can just pull it straight off the epoxy. There's nothing you're going to stick in. But that there now is as strong as, a, as one piece because I've got a bracket underneath it. So I'm going to spend the day cleaning this up. I'll be able to put this floor down, put everything in place, and I'm going to go over the other side into the porthole, have that part finished and completed. Uh, I've got a lot to do. The nice thing about that, it only needs a little clean up. I've got to get rid of all this, so, cause that really yuck, that's awful. I mean, that's just not good enough. So I was praying that this was gonna just fit, but look, it's like a bloody centimeter. So I'm gonna have to notch out um, a small section of this. So what I'll do is I'll go like this, leave the structure there just for the, uh, the top of the floor and then something like this again. And that'll get it, uh, give me a little bit of wiggle room to get it in. So even when I lifted that end there, it still didn't quite clear this section here. So I think I'll just get rid of it and uh, and call it a, a bad experience. <laughs> Why is it always so hot? It's like a 35 in here and it's like almost the end of April for Christ's sake, let's have a bit of winter for God's sake. Just. <laughs> a bit tight. Right, I'm gonna move this freaking mother module again. I'm gonna move it over to the starboard side so I can start working down in the port side. I'm gonna remove it, all that stuff out there, start and do exactly what I've done on the starboard side over there so that I'm at the same level on both holes so that when I come to clean up, I'm just gonna go right through and do it all at once. So. Well, there it is, everyone, another week. And uh, yeah, if you're not tired at the end of that, I don't know what's gonna make you tired, but. Uh, you know, as I leave you with this last bit of uh, module moving, I just want to thank everyone for who's subscribed to my channel. I'm up over 10,000. Please subscribe, guys, and get your uh, notifications with the bell and uh, give it a like, you know, nothing else for the hard work. And, uh, and I'll see you next time on Life on the Hulls. Catch you later, guys.